All right, guys, have to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News and plenty going on right now. A new patch update drops yesterday. Rays seemingly unintentionally nerfed, but loads of talk from all the pros about the current state of the agents in this game. Is Chamber way too strong? Which players are the best that are using all those different agents? 100 Thieves have their points on who the best player right now is in the game. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. As I say, lots to dive into. First, I just wanted to mention this, right, unfortunately, because yesterday we looked at the fact that there was that kind of Neptune thing coming out. We looked like he's got Omen on his head. There was all this talk lately about the eighth map potentially getting revealed soon. There was some indication that it might be something to do with an aquarium. Seems like that's not the case. It's going to be to do with this new bundle, or maybe they're just kind of baiting us and the, and the new map is going to be something along these lines. But uh, yeah, more than likely, it's just something to do with this new bundle. So they drop one of these every so often. Kind of cool, I suppose. But what I'm really interested in is this eighth map, which uh, apparently we're going to get some teasers for relatively soon indeed. Now, here we go then with the patch notes that arrived yesterday. So patch 4.10, there's been some talk about the agents, right? And that's kind of the key point. They always, you know, put the agents in here to make it look like they're going to do some agent changes. And there has been some updates, but uh, nothing drastic, at least, well, nothing drastic on the actual state of the agents themselves, at least in terms of the patch notes. But in reality, in the actual game, things are rather different. Now, um, you know, people were joking about maybe the judge is going to go absolutely out of control this time, which unfortunately is not the case quite as of yet. But if you look at this, right, we see that, okay, there's some map updates. We'll have a look at this one here in a second. Gameplay systems, like, you know, bugs and some agent changes. They're effectively fixing bugs and the like. And I'm pretty sure even up here, there's nothing particularly significant. Like, they've made a few bug changes and stuff like this. And agent progress, change bars and stuff for these agents. But apparently, there has actually been some tangible changes to Rays, especially, as we can see right here. So, this is the talk from Flight. So, that, well, effectively, the satchel nerf seems to have well come through. Now, whether this is a bug or not, this wasn't mentioned in the patch notes. Which does make me think whether it should have been. Now, um, I think there was some even other changes, like Neon, people say that neon's got even worse now and that wasn't mentioned either so i don't know really what's going on on the right side the fact that either they're making these changes and just like, not saying them and just silent patches effectively without even mentioning them in the patch notes or this is all unintentional and that somehow this stuff is happening so not really sure about this but um as flight says right here satchel effectively has been nerfed it seems so it seems like you've basically got i mean this kind of describes it rather nicely your momentum is screwed now from satchels and your alt and you just drop out of the air as if she has bricks strapped to her don't know what could have caused this but i hope it's fixed fast because you now feel so slow and clunky. That's kind of the annoying thing about this, right? And this is one of the clips here. So Mozera kind of says, like, there's something going on with Raze. Feels like she's kind of got concrete strapped around her feet. But, um, you know, as you can see right here, this is kind of what it looks like now. So if you jump on this satchel, it doesn't quite have the same kind of momentum properties that it seemed to use to. It's kind of a strange, it definitely doesn't look like how it did before. And I'm sure it doesn't feel how it did before either. So this is, I'm sure, really annoying to people who have kind of, you know, perfected or tried to perfect these satchel lineups, right? You drop, pop a satchel, go around a corner. Things are now rather different. So I'm not sure if this is intentional to try and nerf Rays or whether they've, they've just kind of done this accidentally. But um, this seems to be happening an awful lot lately. So intrigued to your thoughts on this, really. Not really sure what their plans are right now in terms of agent balance right now. This is another big change, actually, because we've seen tens and other pros talk about this an awful lot. About that, well, the jump up effectively here on Haven. Now, this has been a massive talking point, right? That uh, Especially with the likes of Jet, you can get up here with their passive ability. If you get on top of this box, you can, you can jump up, turn left. If you strafe in the right way, especially with her passive, you can get on top here without using an actual jump ability, right? You don't have to waste any one of your rock drafts to get up here because you can do it with a passive ability. And of course, this is a very advantageous spot. If you have an operator, you can look down the hallway or you can look down the street, right? It's a difficult off angle to clear at times. And it's actually a very powerful spot just in general on the map. And the fact that you can get it without using an ability, not spending any money, has that been a bit of a question mark whether you should be able to do that? Now, it seems nowadays they've changed it so you can't do this anymore. It's very borderline, like it would take a lot of tries to actually get this right anyway. But now you just straight up can't do this anymore even you know with her passive you can still updraft up here if you really want to but of course that's going to cost you some money right so this is a big talking point really and people were saying look why didn't Riot fix this sooner just because a lot of tournaments were affected by teams doing this and then it being said okay well that's actually like a bug that's a pixel walk spot you're not allowed to use that spot if you don't use your updraft and therefore people are like look like this is so messy because you can get there without using it and then teams were getting forfeited for using this spot and all this type of drama was going on so Riot seemingly finally have said look okay we'll just not make this possible without an updraft and therefore like it shouldn't affect any tournaments anymore if you want to get up there you've got to use your ability and this is a spot that i didn't really hear quite as much about over at the a site but it does seem like this box now you can't just jump up here anymore either right so this is also a pretty important one that they've changed a little bit it's not sure exactly how they've done this seems like the height of the box is probably the same but just um whatever reason you just can't jump on it quite as you used to so definitely a few tweaks there on haven probably make the map play a little bit more consistently but maybe some people won't like these changes to be honest as of course it always is now of course look massive talk 
talked lately about Chamber, the state of, of him as an agent, the fact that he's being picked 90% of the time in North America and similar around the world really, effectively replaced Jet in a sense in that way. And as Durga says, how does Chamber being able to teleport six times in a round make any sense at all? Only the 20 second delay, lots of people are saying, look, maybe um, that you bring back his second trip mine, for example, and then nerf the teleports. You can only use it every 40 seconds or even just once per round. The fact that you can use it multiple times per round to me is a rather surprising in and of itself. And of course, many people actually do that, right? As Nathan says, nerf jet to make an agent that has a better jet dash once every 20 seconds, but you have to place it. Oh no. Yet the total area of the teleport is longer than the jet dash, right? So I did just want to mention Leaf there, right? Because I thought it was interesting what 100 Thieves had to say on who they think is the best player in the game. They talk a little bit about agents, like uh, which agents they would remove from the game. Talking about, you know, even Derek says Chamber's got to go, Jet's got to go. I think maybe he says Jet and Chamber and also Yoru. They definitely have some other ideas as well. They talk about their favorite team. It's pretty cool content. Bang is coming out of the iPad that I thought was kind of funny because I think he's doing some school stuff and quite, quite be in attendance with the rest of the team. But of course, they also kind of mentioned the big question, who is the best player in the game right now? They talk mainly about North American players. I thought maybe a Durka would come in there or there's also players from APAC that you could potentially consider as well based on their performances at Masters. But I mean, like, they mentioned Tens. They mentioned some other players they formerly teamed with Ethan, for example, over at NRG. I'll certainly share the clip for you guys, but there are some other big names they might have missed out here. Who do you think, besides anyone on your current roster, is the best current player? Just the nation. Just the nation? Oh, oh the yeah, nation? Zombs, other than Zom. Wait, I heckin' love Tens. I'll just say one of my ex teammates, Ethan or Nitro. She's like most impact to me is like Leaf. Now Leaf, actually, now that you say that, he is the best in the game. Now that I actually Nah, actually, now that I think about it. He plays every role and he's the best. No, he Simple is the enough. best player probably. Just like actually, straight no. up. Like actually. Because he can do anything. True. If you could remove three Valorant agents, which ones would you remove? Take Jet out of the game. Awful character. Astron release, I would have said. I'll just say her still. Let's take, let's take KO back out of the game. I'll remove Yoru. I'll remove Chamber. I'll remove Astra too. I'd remove Brim, Omen, Astra, and then you can only play Viper. Genius. <laughs> I'd, I'd also remove Astra, Neon, and Yoru. I would do Jet. Chamber KO. So of course there's been plenty of players killing it in the Emir side right now. A couple of the Fnatic guys including Durka most certainly who a lot of people think on the Chamber right now might just be one of the best in the world. Seen it of course it's never going to be too far behind. The likes of Scream as well. They've been killing it of course. They're always going to be up there. These are the top 10 rated players from the first couple of weeks on the Emir side. In North America of course we looked at this yesterday. Kind of surprised that they didn't mention Ye or didn't mention Marv or something because despite the fact that Ye has absolutely absurd numbers and certainly I think deserves his place among that conversation. Marv at Masters was absolutely ridiculous. They kind of, well, at least it's what they're talking about with regard to Leaf. Marv is an incredibly versatile player, can do all sorts of stuff. And I thought it was interesting words from them, actually. The fact that, um, you know, they didn't really consider the likes of Ye, or they mentioned Tens, of course, as well. But like, uh, the players that are less versatile, they maybe consider a little bit less down the list in terms of best players as the ones that are more versatile, right? That's why they seem to really rate Leaf. He's, of course, been a massive talking point over on the Cloud9 side, especially last season when Cloud9 got very good and were, for a brief period of time, the best team in North America. Before this season began, and Optic have kind of reasserted their dominance. But yeah, Leaf is a guy who people were talking about all sorts of stuff last year. And this year, kind of the, the talk about Leaf has maybe calmed down a bit. But 100 Thieves say, look, you've got to watch out for this guy because not only is his stats very good indeed, but he can run all sorts of different agents, right? And he has his thoughts on this as well. As Ye says, everyone's talking about Chamber. Could we talk about how Riot nerfed our girl Neon into the ground? That's a really interesting one from Optic, right? Because of course, yes, they're two and zero. They're looking relatively comfortable to qualify again for the playoffs here in North America. But their run to Masters was done at not necessarily largely by because they won all those maps in a row to win the tournament but crucially it was done to a degree with Neon coming into the meta they pretty much introduced Neon to the meta Victor was using her of course very effectively indeed creating all sorts of space for them for their team and, um, and really like it's not something that can be done to quite the same degree anymore because of the, what they consider to be nerfs that have come through the key one really is how quickly or how significantly like um they effectively the charge is eaten up now by using the runaround ability that depletes now much quicker than it used to right so I think that's kind of a key point that the optic guys are very frustrated about and um, as even as Leaf says right here so he's obviously like he's on cloud nine right now looking to become the best team in North America again and he's saying look Optic like yeah please can you guys calm it down yes guys you're as coordinators Optic please run Yoru and Neon right so like lots of talk about her potential agent changes and try to get Optic to deviate from their strategy play Phoenix please I'm trying to figure out if other teams are social experiments it's like um yeah d interesting interaction between these two that I'm sure most people would consider some of the two best players in North America but yeah what do you think about 100 Thieves have to say on that one like Leaf is kind of what might be their pick but also 
also, you know, Tent and even Zombs Nation, right? And Ethan, these other players got mentions as well. Just wanted to mention one quick thing before we close out the video here. Thought this was rather interesting, actually, over RIB.GG with regard to the replay system that, of course, is not arriving anytime soon. Now, what I think most pro players have been kind of frustrated about this, right? Because they think, look, we need a replay system, need to be able to watch our VODs back from different POVs and this type of stuff. But some players actually like it, right? I thought it was kind of interesting from Angel that he's like, oh, look, I'm really happy about not having a replay system. Really happy indeed. We are a team that being FPX, of course, from which a lot of other teams copy strapped on ideas and by having demos, it would be much easier for everyone to do it. Without it, they need to watch the radar while watching VODs, so it's much harder. Usually we come up with these ideas from within, so we're not going to lose everything without demos, but if they will come up, we might lose something, right? So other teams can look into their strats and counter strat them much more effectively if a replay kind of demo viewer exists in this game. So like, um, you know, basically the teams with better strats and better ideas are going to kind of oppose this, whereas teams with maybe worse strats or want to copy some of the, what the best teams are doing, they might prefer this a little bit more. But of course, there are other benefits and maybe costs, but mostly benefits to having something like this in the game itself. Moses says a kind of similar thing. And then and then Jampy says from the Liquid side, that, uh, look, I would really like it to be in the thing. Of course, it's from the CS side as well. And it's actually very helpful for new players to get spotted by having these demos that kind of coaches and stuff can actually look at, right? So enjoy to give us from all this stuff in the comment section below. Phenomenal clip just to close out the video here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit on the like button. Tell us your YouTube gods. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And I'll grow the competitive value community. Thank you once again as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. I I think I Last player standing. Spike down A. Thirty seconds I got left. Oh my god. Oh my god.